Hey guys, my name is Dr. Michael Jerkins. I'm a practicing doctor as well as co-founder of a bank for doctors called Panacea Financial. And we are here today with Brandon Fanazzo, who is an expert on helping doctors finance their practice. Um, and specifically what we're trying to figure out is, is it easier to be approved for a loan to start a practice or to acquire a practice? So Brandon, how about you introduce yourself and then talk a little bit about that? Sure. Hey, thanks, Mike. Uh, like I said, my name is Brandon Fanazzo. I'm the head of uh, Practice Solutions at Panacea. I've been doing uh, healthcare lending for about 15 years across three other large uh, lending institutions. Um, so to walk you through what's uh, easier to qualify to start or buy a practice, I'm going to break it down into, into two categories. One, for first-time owners, and two, if you already own a practice and you're looking to buy your second, third, fourth, what have you. So for first-time owners, um, it's really, they're both, I'd say, about the same as far as if it's easy or hard. Uh, it's all about preparation. You know, with like anything in life, if you prepare properly, it shouldn't be too tough. And so what you'll want to do is first reach out to a banker who you trust or you refer to, who you've seen do good things in the industry uh, a year in advance and just tell them you're looking to either start or buy a practice and, and ask them what you should do to, um, to prepare yourself. So if you're looking to start a practice, you'll want to, one, make sure that you've got an associate position that you're working at that you can keep when you open the doors at your new practice. That supplemental income will be key to getting approved. The other thing that the lender is going to look for is your liquidity or your savings or your net worth. Um, you know, most people come out of school with a lot of student loans. Don't let that deter you. What you want to do is make those minimum payments and put away as much cash as possible because we'd prefer to see $75,000 in the bank and you know a, a large student loan balance versus 10,000 in the bank and you've paid down those student loans because you'll need that liquidity for unforeseen expenses. Um, if you're looking to buy a practice, then it's gonna be a little different. The associate position is not gonna be as necessary to keep because when you go buy this practice, you should go there full time there should be cash flow coming directly from that practice that will be able to support the loan uh, and you personally immediately. So that associate position could technically be nearby and that's not gonna be a problem as long as you don't have a non-compete. Same thing with the liquidity though. You'll still wanna make sure that you save money um, and, and not pay down all these, these debts that you may have. Um, experience is about the same. You know, some lenders only need one year experience. Some lenders need two, some maybe even three. Uh, I worked uh, for a lender that would actually help someone right out of school, a new grad. They wouldn't lend very much, but there was a product for it. Personally, I think you should have a couple years experience. You want to, you know, hone the skill you just learned and not immediately jump into wearing uh, another hat of uh, being a business owner. So go get some experience. Um, make sure you're good at your craft and then go become a business owner because there's a lot to it uh, and probably a lot of things you you don't know and will be surprised by, especially at the level of work. Um, if you're an existing practice owner and you're looking to you know expand by your second, third or fourth uh, or start, the um, the bank's going to look at a startup to approve you for a startup based off your what you've done in the past, your existing practice. The bank's also usually not going to lend um, off of projections. They're going to look at your existing practice, see if it can support new debt, and then approve it uh, that way. So one of the biggest things you'll want to do is make sure that that practice is stable. Make sure you filed a tax return that shows decent income, an income enough to support maybe you have an existing loan, the new money you want to take out, and all of your personal expenses. Um, the other thing you'll really want to do is make sure that you have or will have an associate uh, that's working at your existing practice so that you have free time to go open another practice. Um, ideally, if a lender comes to look at you, you can say, yes, I already have an associate working there. I only work there two days a week, and this is what the numbers look like. That way, the lender knows, wow, this doctor already has three days free with those numbers. It's perfect scenario because then we know you've got three days a week free to open office number two. And the same thing goes for office number five, six, or seven. At one point, you obviously can't work at all of them, but what you'll want to do is make sure you've got 
those practices stable with associates in place um, in good contracts so that they're not leaving. Um, if you're looking to buy your second practice versus start, it'll be a little bit different. We'll obviously look for the existing uh, practice to support itself, but then the practice you're going to buy will look at those revenues and that income to see if it can cover you know, the loan for the practice that you're going to purchase. And then those incomes combined can obviously help support you uh, personally. So really just preparation, right? Putting yourself in, in the right position to uh, to do both. I wouldn't say one's easier than the other. They're just a little bit different. You'll really want to ask yourself if which which is the right path for you, right? So that's a quick tidbit on. I think it's great. And, it, and it really what I hear you saying is trying to figure out what your goals are and being able to be prepared well in advance to execute on those goals and go through the next step. Um, so I appreciate you giving that insight to, to yeah. us. I, I think it's a lot to chew on. And I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people will have a lot of questions. If you guys do, feel free to reach out to Brandon or myself. Our contact information will be on this video, but you can always reach out to um, DSN. They have our contact info too. We get lots of questions from Dennis from DSN, so we're always happy to help. But thank you for um, chatting with us, Brandon, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you. Awesome.